let's talk a little bit about your schedule on your last attempt. How many months were you studying and then how many hours did you study per week? And were you consistent or was it just depends? So like Monday to Monday through Thursday, I would try to get at least two to three hours in the evenings. Okay. Two to three hours roughly, you know, um, and I would set like I knew what su a subject I was on and I knew how many videos there were and it's like okay I'm gonna get through problems one through 15 like how you know in in tonight and then tomorrow mm -hmm. I'm gonna do 15 through 30 or whatever it is and then kind of keep myself on a accountable and then sometimes you know I'd get through all whatever let's say it was 15 problems like great in a three-hour time 10 sometimes I only got through half of that because it took me longer to understand or you know it was harder to split up my studying in two days you know like okay finish the second half tomorrow then move on so that's how I did it and then mm -hmm. on Fridays I have every other Friday off so on my off Fridays I would spend about four to five hours like as a, a treating mm -hmm. it like a weekend and then especially if I, my weekends were busy which a lot of times they are with family stuff so I would have to gauge accordingly so then I would put more on that Friday so to make up for not doing as much on the weekend, but I would also aim for three to five hours Saturday and Sunday, but I always didn't get that. But then I made up for it by doing more during the week because I was more available. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had to balance it out. So my schedule wasn't completely consistent, but I did try to study every day. There were some days where I was just like, nope, not today. I'm taking a day off. I don't have the mental capacity. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a long work day my head hurts, not even going to try it because I did in the beginning was trying to force it where I was studying every single day, whether I had a good day or not. And those days that I had long days for work, I realized I wasn't retaining what I was. It wasn't working. So I was like, I just got to take a step back. If I don't have it, the time or the energy, don't force it also. So, and that, that helped like taking those breaks or realizing or you know ac acknowledging what my mind is telling me like hey you can't do this today take a step back come back to it tomorrow and also even when I was studying like three to, well during those five hour times I wouldn't study the full five hours obviously I had to take a break in between and I realized when I would need to take a break is when I was getting every single problem in a row wrong like the like mm -hmm. three or four or five and I'm like why am I getting these wrong took a break, came back to it, redid them. And it's like, okay, I got these, like, you know, I, I'm getting it. It's because I was getting tired and I just needed that break for like 15 minutes or 30 minutes. And then I'd come back and then I breeze right through it. So just knowing when I needed that, those breaks in between. Yeah. And that might, must've boost your confidence a little bit too. Cause like you would have seen the low score and then you go to the answers and you're like, oh man, like I had everything the right way. It's just like, you know, I did these silly mistakes. So it's like, you know, it's kind of, you boost your confidence a little bit. You're like, okay, well I got, you know, technically you kind of got them right. I just got to watch yeah. out for these silly mistakes during the exam. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's why it's really important to take these practice exams because you learn so much from them. You learn from your mistakes because you don't want to do those mistakes during the exam. Right. And that's why I really ask you guys and encourage you to take as many practice exams as you can so that you you remember these things. I'm, I'm sure during your actual exam, you were probably double checking the number, making sure you got the right number, making sure you, you were plugging the right numbers in your calculator. You were watching out for those silly mistakes that you did, and then you avoided them during your exam. So besides our accelerator course, so you took morning, afternoon, statics, you took the whole bundle, the two practice exams, one the conceptual, the practical. Besides that, you also watch a couple YouTube videos, a couple channels that you will show me after the call. And I can link that in the description below for the students in case they want to check it out. Was And then a couple practice exams as well. Was there anything else that you used that helped you with your studies? So let me just run it through. Yeah, I used the Genie Prep. I used those YouTube channels. Um, I used the resources I just had around me with people that I knew who were educated in the topics. <clears throat> um, I used uh, the practice stuff I used. I used the Lindbergh practice. Um, I used one other practice. I can give you the, I can tell you, look it up. 
Chris, I can give you the full list of what I use, I, uh, escaping me at the moment. Um, I use the NCES uh, practice exam for civil. Um, I also was able to get my hands on an NCES uh, mechanical practice exam, which has very similar problems for their morning portions. <clears throat> mm. So I was able to go through and do that and help solidify the morning stuff. For me, that was really helpful. Um, is there anything else I use? You know, I don't think so. I think that was that was all I used. And I, if there's other resources out there, I wish I'd gotten my hands on them. <laughs> but uh, that that's what I had available to me, and uh, that's what ended up working out. Now, during that four months, how many hours did you study uh, during the week, and then also during the weekend? I would say at least an hour or hour and a half in the weekday because of my work. But in the weekends. Uh, maybe four or five hours on Saturday and again four or five hours on Sunday. So roughly eight to 10 hours. Depending on the uh, topics, if I'm studying for statics and dynamics, I used to spend more time, but if it's mathematics or you know, geotechnical transportation, construction, um, that's those things I'm familiar with. So maybe a little less than that. But on an average, I would say eight to 10 hours in the weekends and maybe, oh, sorry. Uh, one day during the weekday, I used to take off, no mm -hmm. study, nothing. That is uh, Monday. Because Mondays are usually my busiest days because of the work. So I, during the four months, I, I normally took Monday as my off day. But the rest of the weekdays, I used to study one, one and a half hour in the weekends around eight to 10 hours. Were, were you consistent with your studying and did you feel like the study plan helped you with that to like show up every day and kind of study? Yes, I was very consistent with my study plan. I was very, honestly, I probably did a little bit more uh, than what we discussed, but yes, I was very consistent with the study plan. It is definitely helpful. I would suggest, I would also suggest even if you are strong in a subject and you feel like you don't need to review that subject to review it anyway, because you will definitely learn something new taking these courses, taking this course. So you would you would not study at all till like one week before the exam and then you would study for 40 hours? I think I was able to maybe study for about nine days with every I tried to do every day for like two hours. Um, and I think that was beginning of November. So, so I was able to at least uh, get through the statics uh, uh, portion in basically almost the, the, the nine days of studying. But my husband would just, we live by um, a public library. He would walk me down there. Okay, sweetheart, here you go. And then he would do homework with our daughter. Okay, we're going to leave now. You're going to stay here. So, so that to have that family support, that was, uh, that was great. And then, and then just work, just something went sideways at work and I got to dive all in and stuff like that. So sometimes then, then I would go periods of, without studying. But what you're teaching is, right, if you know the concept of it, you truly understand the concept of it, you should be able to pick it up. Right. And once you make that connection in your your mind, your brains, it's it's there. It just needs a little bit of a reminder to, um, to jumpstart it. When I'm training my guys just for work um, items, I tell them, you know, you're going to learn something from everyone that you meet whatever you and and sometimes you actually don't learn it uh through uh what they tell you mm. but it's what what their actions are doing you know what their body their body language so you want to take whatever is best from each trainer that you have and make it your own but don't take it exactly the same but make it your own how would it work how would it help improve you you know so yeah. again if you made a mistake today, you know, you clear, clear it out the next day. It's okay. You start over. You, you, I'm going to, I made a mistake yesterday. I'm going to take a look at it. Okay. What can I do to improve and make sure you don't do that for the next day or the next time, you know, you're just trying to improve you as an individual on a daily basis. You can you just start over. You can start over the next day instead of starting over 10 years, you know, you just right a different mindset of you know I'm going to start over tomorrow uh, it's a brand new day you know maybe I might have a bad day today uh, yesterday but you can always clear it um, and then have a better day the next day if you take it with you then that's 
that's a choice that you make, you know? Yeah. And, and, and we all make choices, but, but also know that each time that you make a choice, uh, if you made, uh, you feel like you made a bad choice, you can change that by making a different choice. If you don't change it, don't change your choice and you kind of uh, stagnate, that's still a choice that you made, whether or not you consciously made it. So you graduated in 2011, you started studying. I'm sure when you first started studying, you found, did you struggle a little bit to like, to just learn how to study just because you've been, you've been out of school for so long. How did you approach our course? How did you study for it? How did you learn how to study? What are some of the things that you did that really helped you learn the material in the course? It's uh, a good question. So I think consistency is first, you know, like just uh, be, being consistent um, and, 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 and just you, so there in the beginning, I, the one thing that you, like a lot of times we're trained to study looking at the finish line you know we're, so and it's almost like a cramming mindset like a you know I want to hurry up and get through this so that I can take you know get to that finish line and you constant it was a constant reminder throughout your program that this is a journey and so that helped me to learn rethink how to study it so instead of me thinking of it like, oh, let me hurry up and learn this stuff to pass this exam. It be, it became more like, okay, this is stuff that I, let me, let me understand these concepts. And I think when you're trying to understand the concepts, it naturally just makes you better. It, it, it makes you, like, I feel like I became a much better engineer just by studying, like just by, you know, just like taking that journey. And so I, what helped is that it's, it's, it's under, it's the approach of you're here to understand the world of engineering, not just to pass an exam. And so that gave me, I want to be in it. You know, I love, uh, we're all in this to, because we, I think we all enjoy, right? We like solving problems and we, you know, we took to it and probably from a young age, we maybe excelled a little bit in math and we got, you know, so we're all here because we have a some type of natural thing that makes us want to be an engineer, right? So that, and, and, and also when I got to the afternoon portion, it, I, the most difficult section for me was structural engineering. That was so tough. It took me, like, I was on a roll. Like I got to, like, after, I remember I spoke to you, like, after I got, maybe I was, I don't know, like, I, I think I'd spent like two months or something on like the, like the first section or two. And I think you and I met, I was like, am I taking too long, Kenza? Am I something? And, and you were like, well, you know, like, are you in a hurry to pass it? And I was like, well, not really. You know, is your job like pressuring you? Well, no, not really. Okay, so, you know, take your time, you know? <laughs> and then you, and I remember you specifically were like, you know, try to, you know, maybe, you know, you can, you can try to, fin you know, get ready, uh, get ready, uh, uh, you know, do the afternoon. Let's see how you do. And then you had actually mentioned to me, by the by, like the summer of 2023, maybe you will be ready to to take your exam. You had actually kind of gauged where I was in the program at that time. You kind of put me on that trajectory because I was actually trying to take it before the end of the year. You were very nice about it. You wasn't like, oh, you're not gonna be ready by then, right? You were just kind of like, you know, just take your time. Like you're not in a hurry. No one's pressuring you. You don't. You didn't schedule the exam yet. So why don't you go through the afternoon course, you take a couple practice exams, you do this, you do that. And maybe by this time next year, you'll be ready, uh, not this time next year, may, uh, maybe by uh, summer of next year, you can take your FE 
And then maybe by the end of the year, you can do your PE. And so that kind of stuck in my head. And so, um, but anyway, when I got to the afternoon, structural engineering was so tough. But then I actually, when I went back through it, I enjoyed it. I like, I, I actually really enjoyed it. And it became like my strongest subject. And so, and I was even like watching like, you know, house framing videos, like just to just because I like, that's how much like, I was like, oh, this applies to that. And this applies to that. And, you know, the, the FEMN and, you know, this, you know, design moment and the design strength and this and that. And, oh, if you just to get a timber beam, you just have to use the, the, you know, just use the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Z section for the timber beam. And, you know, just knowing the difference between using the, the, the metal and the, and the like, I, I was like doing it in my, in my free time you know, like, wow. like the structural. And so I was like, man, well, we can't be afraid to start loving because those are the subjects, I guess, like one of those subjects would be one of the ones that we would be getting serious about anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's like not being afraid to like fall in love with also just the material itself. And that also helped me as well. Oh, yeah. Everybody now.